All right, what is up, people of the internet? Welcome back to another episode of the Waveform Podcast. We're your hosts. I'm Marquez. I'm Andrew. And I'm David. And this week, uh, we'll have a little bit of a... Oh my God. Hmm. Sorry, I just caught my eye. David, your shirt. It's, oh, it's sorry. It's so bright. Bright? It, it's really colorful. What is it? This is a choice, isn't it? Well, you know, YouTube commenter uh, Ashmit Gupta said... Hey, just a small, very dumb thing I'd like to mention. Please, Andrew and David, wear something colorful next time. Because I guess it's just me. But from their point of view, it seemed on the grayscale today. And it was just a bit uncanny. So, um... I did not listen to you. Sorry. Well... But David listened for both both of us. us. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) There's a little red in the corner. There's a little red up here. Their side. Yeah. For the audio listeners, um, just imagine incredible amounts of color being, like, forced into your gaze. It's Hypnofrog. Yes. 100%. Yes. It's you can just imagine me in full color. Perfect. And you'll enjoy it. It's okay. face paint. <laughs> well, okay. So this this week, uh, I got a little story time for uh, Tesla opening up their superchargers. But also, we have some wacky phones from Mobile World Congress to talk about. And then we'll wrap it up with a couple quick hits, like a little flip they switched on the iPhone and some iMessage on Windows laptop stuff. But I guess I'll just open it with the, the story time. I yeah, just I got back. Mm-hmm. I just got back from a little road trip. So we, we've seen these headlines for the past, I don't know, months of uh, years. Yeah, a long time. Yeah, of Tesla's going to open their superchargers to non-Tesla EVs. And in the US, there's two kinds of electric cars. There's Teslas and there's all the rest. Teslas can charge on Tesla superchargers and also on public chargers for backup. All the rest charge on public chargers all the time. And we've talked about the reliability issues with those, yeah. the the <laughs> charging experience with those not yeah. being ideal. If you're buying a $170,000 Lucid Air and your best bet is like crossing your fingers that hopefully the Electrify America charger works, it just doesn't seem to match up. So, you know, Tesla's have been the ones that I, that I largely recommend in the US. But today, as of the recording, for the first time, that is now different because there are some select Tesla superchargers in the U.S. 10, I think, right 10 now. 10 or something under mm-hmm. a dozen that have been retrofitted with this new thing called the Magic Dock. And yeah. you can officially charge on them with a CCS car with a built-in adapter. So today I went out with the Rivian R1T up to the closest one, which is actually like an hour and a half upstate into New York. And I checked it out and I saw how it went. So here's how it went. Mm. Uh, I first, I drove, I got there. I had like 90 miles of range left. Perfect. I opened the Tesla app and it shows like a map of the superchargers in your area. You pick the one that's on the map and you say, okay, which charge port am I at? Because with a Tesla, you know, you just unplug it and plug it into your car and it's plug and play. It's so seamless. With this one, your car's not talking to the Tesla superchargers. So you kind of have to do a little extra work. You tell it I'm at stall one B. You hit the button, you hear a little click and it's actually unlocked. When you pull it out, the head of the plug has an adapter on it already oh. that works with CCS, and you plug it in, and then it's plug and play. It just starts working, and all of the action happens in the Tesla app. So there's no screen on the stall, there's no extra work. You have a Tesla account, it all happens in the app. And that, for me, worked fine. Like That, to me, makes the Rivian a better truck for me to own in this area, because now I can actually reliably move around on Tesla superchargers that are reliable. It's not as fast as a perfectly working Electrify America charger would have been. I maxed out at about 155 kilowatts, which for those of you who know, uh, a V3 supercharger working with a Tesla will go up to 250 kilowatts and a perfect condition Electrify America charger uh, with the right car may briefly hit 300 or 350 kilowatts, which is crazy fast charging. But you know, it was fast. It was fast charging. It worked. That's the bottom line. So that was what was exciting. And I was about to turn around and leave. Uh, but I did want to stay for a little bit and just like fill up because I had to drive back here. Mm-hmm. So I went and grabbed a Dunkin' Donuts muffin and I came back. And when I came back, there was a Lucid Air, <laughs> two more Teslas, and an F-150 Lightning. Dang. And nice. I was like, oh. Wow, that was That fast. got really interesting. <laughs> yeah. So what's happening is... Here's the, this is what I think is going to be the most interesting about this, which is like, okay, cool, more EVs are more, you know, possible to road trip with. But every single Tesla has a charge port at the back left corner of the car since they started making them. Mm-hmm. And the point of that is Tesla superchargers have the exact perfect cable length so that when you back up into the spot, it just reaches and you plug in and it's the shortest cable for the fastest charge and everything's optimized. And that's, that's great. 
but all these other EVs all have the charging port in various different spots. I pulled up with the, uh, with the Rivian, which you might not know, has a charging port on the front left corner. So instead of backing in, I pull into a spot, but I am technically in the wrong spot for the one that I'm charging at. So if you backed in, you would have been in one spot because, because I pulled in forward, I was in the wrong oh. spot for that car, <laughs> yeah. which is fine if it's just one of me, but what if more show up, yeah. right? So the Lucid Air shows up, the Lucid Air has it at the front left as well, the F-150 Lightning shows up, it has it at the front left as well. And so now what happens is when the F-150 Lightning showed up, there were actually three spots available. Only one of them was it possible for it to charge at because only one of them had the cable available on the correct side for that car. And then at that point, are those other two spots not available for Any even Tesla. Teslas? Uh, because it's used, or one correct. of those spots doesn't work for a regular Tesla. I think I'm gonna have to check my video, but in the moment, if another non-Tesla pulled up, they could not charge. I think Teslas would have been able to charge. Well, so, okay, so it's three empty be... spots next to each other, right? Assuming yeah. the F-150 pulls in the middle spot, yeah. then it's using the charger from the left of it, correct? Mm -hmm. So that left spot's now Now taking can't... it from where a Tesla would have been. So a te even a Tesla in that left spot couldn't charge. Right. Yeah. And then in the right spot, a Tesla could charge. Nice. Yeah. So <laughs> basically the idea is if it's all Teslas, you'll maximize all the spots. It, as soon as one non-Tesla shows up and parks anywhere, it can throw off. Yeah. It, it goes from eight superchargers to seven to six to five because people are not able to correctly. So it becomes actually like an etiquette problem because mm. the Lucid backed out and parked on the other side so that there was three next to each other so that the F-150 could charge. So we all had to it's, talk to each other to figure this uh, out. So who could like charge the urinal. Where? And there was like, like <laughs> it's gonna become this like unwritten rule of this is how you have to park. You know? Yeah, it's I, really interesting. I'm really curious about the magic charger and how it works. So, yeah. so is it like there is one hose that is always in the charging thing and when you hit the button it attaches the adapter so when it's hanging in the new normal supercharging position when you arrive most tesla superchargers it's just the normal cable right and you just pop it out with the button and plug it into your car yeah with this one it's sitting in an adapter already okay when you arrive so when you unlock it with the normal tesla you just pop it out like normal if you unlock it in the app with a non-Tesla, the adapter also it unlocks. Keeps the adapter locked onto the head, and it unlocks the adapter. And mm. so when you pop it out, the adapter's on the cable. So that's how they're. That's the, the retrofit that they came up with. Is there no way to steal the adapter? Is it like locked on to the? I didn't try. <laughs> <laughs> that's a really good question, that actually. Um, I guess yeah. The pin that I unlocked was specifically to pop it out of the, the the harness, I guess it's called. So I never tried to take it off the end. Okay. I assume you won't be able to. I would hope so. Yeah. I hope. Yeah. Um, uh, so, yeah. Something that's kind of good that um, happened, I think, yeah, February 15th, which was actually only like two weeks ago, is that the Biden-Harris administration announced that new um, $7.5 billion EV charging plan. And in order to be eligible for to be one of the chargers that's going to be on the road, you have to have 97% uptime. Okay. Which oh. compared to our experience that we had on the road trip is like night and day. That would be amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Because As... currently it's like terrible. Yeah. And well, Tesla chargers have like incredibly good uptime. So. I mean, that, that whole bill, because that's the same bill that also basically had Tesla make this change, right? Because they weren't allowed to get funding from that bill or a bill previously similar to it unless they oh, were for getting other funding cars from this well. bill? I, I believe once they opened it up to interesting not only their own company that makes sense they were allowed to start getting funding which interesting. we covered a few months ago i think um so that's that's cool that means through some of these different ev laws we're having in the u.s now we now have Tesla chargers that can charge non-Tesla cars and hopefully, hopefully. <laughs> like way better. Way, yeah, way, way better more. uptime. Yeah. It'll be interesting to cool. see how they enforce that because I don't know how you can like just say you have 97% uptime. I don't know if that's, if they're going to have someone out there checking all the time. Well, remember when we were on the road trip and the charger that Brandon and I went to that was broken, we started getting tweeted at by like the New York State Department of Electric Vehicles or something Because like they maintain that. it? Yeah. And then they contacted Ford and got really mad at Ford. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> but that's what I suspect is going to keep happening. We all think it should be up 97% of the time, but who's going to actually do that? Yeah. They'll they'll have to find some way to report in with it. Probably monthly Hopefully or something. Hopefully it'll be a better than previously. Yeah. But I do think all the infrastructure should be 
ultimately getting better now that we're having more and more cars come out. Yeah. And now even if the people going to those chargers are now going to go to Tesla chargers more, they have even more incentive to try and keep up because they're even losing the revenue from that. Right. Yeah. It's an interesting choice, actually. If you are driving one of these vehicles, the choice of do you go to a Tesla one or a non-Tesla one is kind of interesting. Uh, my price per kilowatt was, I think, if you don't have an account, I think it was 50 cents per kilowatt, which is like competitive, but you can get cheaper at other chargers. Uh, but then you have to risk maybe the charger not being up or being broken. Or Do you whatever. know how much that is compared to charging a Tesla on it? Is it more? I, was I think super it's slightly cheaper. It's I said it said ten cents cheaper per kilowatt if you have an account. So I don't know. I it's different per supercharger. You obviously, obviously have to check. I'll do the math in my video also mm -hmm. on the autofocus channel so we can all see the difference. Yeah. Um, when you say account real quick, do you mean just an account that you have to make to go or like, can I have a Tesla account without owning a Tesla? You can have a Tesla account without owning a Tesla just so you can use the app. And then but um, you won't necessarily have a membership, which I think is a month. Oh, that was another thing we membership. talked about. The, there was a membership that they were offering the last time we talked about this headline, mm -hmm. who knows how many months ago <laughs> and probably the eighth time we talked about uh -huh. it. But there's a membership to get cheaper charging rates. Yeah. Can you be a member without being without owning a Tesla? Do you that know? I don't know. Okay, we should figure that out. But That's being a member made it 10 cents per kilowatt cheaper. Okay, so, so if that if you wind up doing road trips through a Tesla charger a lot, even without a Tesla, it could potentially be worth it, but it's yeah. still pretty cheap to fill up, right? Yeah, so total, I went from 30 to 85% on the Rivian, which is a pretty big battery. It's a 135 kilowatt hour battery, and that cost me 30 bucks, and it cost 30 minutes, so it was okay. pretty solid. Um, Here's one more uh, twist to the end of the story. The F-150 Lightning charging port is on the front left, but it's kind of like back a little bit over the wheel, you know where the badge is? Yeah. yeah. And the cable was just barely, barely long enough to actually plug in. So I was there, there was a YouTuber actually who was there who was testing this. He pulled his car up one inch from the stanchion oh my God. to like almost hitting it oh God. to be able to stretch the cable oh. taut all the way to like bend it around the flap because the flap mm, blocks comes it out you have front. to go over the top of the flap and it just barely barely works those tesla hoses are really short yes they, yeah yeah wait so, and that was that was in the spot that was, where he's already using the wrong quote mm -hmm. the wrong charging port yeah yeah so he, if okay. that hadn't worked, we were going to try. I have video of uh, the Lucid, which was like parked halfway out of one of the spots to work. And then if the, I think they were going to swap after I left. So maybe he'll, his video will be up by the time this goes up. But like he was going to try swapping with the Lucid. It was, it's just, okay. there's going to have to be conversations at superchargers when three different types of cars show up with three different types of charging yeah. spots. Do you think there's any chance they extend the cable? No. That, I think that's harder. The I think, problem I see with it, if they don't do that, though, is now, so I already was going to have the question of, like, do we see this becoming an issue in uh, super popular supercharging uh, locations, like, on the West Coast, mm -hmm. where there already is a line? Like, that's one of the one thing with EVs that kind of sucks, is if you're at a gas station line, everyone only takes two minutes. Mm -hmm. You're at a line for a, a charger, and you need that charger, you're there a, a couple hours. So now, if you have that position where one non-Tesla EV is in there and taking up two spots essentially. Yeah. You could be doubling or tripling that line very quickly. Yep. And I can't wait till the public freakout subreddit has like fights because an <laughs> F-150 <laughs> lightning guy. Yeah. 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 They're just the like bolt. fights at the Tesla supercharger. But yeah. I feel like Tesla for their own customers needs to do something to make that. That's That was interesting. So on, I'm really curious how they're going to roll this out. I think the ones that they've opened up so far are specifically some of the lowest use superchargers mm -hmm. just so they can see how it goes. Like when I got there at, you know, nine in the morning or whatever, I was the only one there. There was one other Model 3 briefly before other people started showing up to try to test. And all the ones that are in our area were not on the map. And I wonder if they're going to just not do that for a while, just see mm -hmm. how it goes with the non-highly used ones because of the types of things I just mentioned, which is like, there are going to be people like crossing over, people yeah. like making spots unoptimized. And I don't think that's going to fly in the ones that have like 16 stalls oh. that are all <laughs> always full. So I think it's a wait and see type thing for Tesla, especially uh, considering how that went. Um, what else? Uh, we did pricing. 
how many chargers yeah i think making the cable longer would have been a harder retrofit I think oh yeah it's not even a retrofit at that it's point like it's rebuilding. like rebuilding fully rebuilding yeah right yeah. i would say though if they do get the funding to make new chargers and they make a lot of new chargers they should just try to figure out how to make the cable longer they, from the they get-go. have to i think yeah so. yeah yeah. It's also, doesn't it kind of feel like the Apple effect where it's like when they opened up FaceTime for Android, it was like, yeah, we enabled it for you. But like, you know, in order to get the best experience, <laughs> yeah. you need one of our phones. Yeah, I think that's a, a really important thing to talk about mm-hmm. because poten- that might potentially be like, it's not only that, it's like we did it, it's, we did it and we can get a lot of funding because we did it. But it's not the best. Yeah. Uh, I, I honestly don't think that's, and I'm usually pretty hard on Tesla. I don't think that's really, I think they're getting the funding. I do think they will try and make it a better experience for everyone, mostly because if they don't, they're screwing over their own their own customer base. Right. They they need to yeah. find a way, ideally, to make it available for more cars and also not make it worse for Teslas. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of like, you know, an iMessage group chat where everyone's blue bubbles and then suddenly the green bubble shows up and screws up everything. It's like the same thing. Like when, when an F-150 Lightning shows up, it just ruins the optimization that was happening there. And I do feel like it, t- Tesla at least thinks about that. That's got to be something they have in the back of their head. I was expecting them to do like if it's a 10 charger uh cent- what do you call them a, just just a supercharger station? a center station okay sure, yeah like a 10 charger station like two of them have the retrofit but all of them no, they were all good it. yeah that's wow. that's great i yeah. i would only assume they would try and make a way to like push teslas to the front of the line for it but it's I possible guess, that to get the funding they need all of them to be that way potentially like I all hope so. new chargers or all new updated chargers interesting because this was an existing charger that was like they added the retrofit to make it compatible. Hmm. I imagine hmm. new chargers will also have the magic dot. That could just be to test it to see how it's going. I really think it's a wait and see. I think it's yeah. a test. I'm just yeah. going to enable it for the dozen that have it now and like see how it goes. You know, our videos will go up. They'll see the PR. They'll see how the conversations go. <laughs> yeah. We'll, we'll take it from there. Yeah. But that was my morning. Well, one last nice. question. Yeah. When the Tesla started showing up, were they like, what the, what is happening? Do they think like people were? Tr- did, did you talk to any of them? I, did, I talked to okay. all of them. Yeah, uh, one of them was he. He was watching both of our vi- like two of us are YouTubers, and he's watched both of our videos. Oh, really? So he was like charging in a Model Three, and was like, "I just got this the other day. Like this oh, is crazy. A- You're all charging here." Um, but yeah, they just backed in and parked like sort of normal. What's funny is I was going to mention there used to be supercharger etiquette specifically because at V2 superchargers. Uh, mm. stalls next to each other share the same power source. Yeah. And so if there's 10 stalls, it's like urinal etiquette. Yeah. Do not charge same. next to me. <laughs> yeah. Do not charge next to me because you're going to cut my charge time in half for no reason. Charge over there, please. Uh, now with V3 superchargers, that's solved. Everyone gets full power. But now you have this new problem. Mm. So we'll see. Interesting. Dang. We'll see. Keep an eye on that. The full video is on the Autofocus channel for sure by the time this is out. So... And we'll see. Who's the other YouTuber that has the F-150 stuff? Uh, let me find his name. Just in case anyone wants a more in-depth yeah. F-150. I like that you State both brought charge. charge. State of Charge. State of Charge. Cool. Um, another, also a video from the Out of Spec uh, channel. He, like, last night, as soon as it showed up on the app, drove up there and charged. So, like, people are te- are testing it readily. Wow. It's great. So, yeah. yeah. So, that, that was my day. Uh, let's take a quick break and do a trivia question. And when we come back, we got to talk weird phones trivia time so quick update the scores yes marquez has eight andrew has six david has nine. Oh, that's right you're doing great andrew <laughs> <Everybody> loves you <laughs> okay first question so we just finished talking about rivian uh but do you know what the company was named before it was called oh rivian? my god i sorry wow. I'll accept two answers because they had two previous names. So, what? yeah. Two different previous names. Oh, this annoys me so much. Okay, sorry. Wow. Right. I don't. Yeah. That's I listened cool. to a podcast about this and I didn't retain the information. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I know a lot of things uh, about Rivian, but that might not be one of the things. Yeah. Okay. I have no idea. All right. Cool. Think answers it. at the end. Hopefully, listeners retain this information. <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> retain this watch time. <laughs> be right back. <laughs> Support for this podcast comes from Gigabyte. So from top tier gaming to powerful content creation, Gigabyte is looking to take you to the next level with their next generation laptops. 
Uh, David and Andrew, they have a bunch of different specs here. Did any of them catch your eye? I think we both play a lot of games. Uh, 360 hertz and a laptop screen sounds wild. Do you, do you need 360 hertz for Dota? Well, the professionals do. <laughs> hey, man. <laughs> I'm uh, in one of the lowest tiers in Dota Okay, too. Okay, so maybe you'd rather enjoy the low tier at 4K UHD. I actually think that their 240 hertz 1440p option would be kind of the perfect balance. Right in the middle. Me. Yeah. Lots of frames. I'm higher not, quality. Yeah, I'm not good at any one thing. I'm right in the middle of everything. You there know? we go. Fair enough. Fair yeah. enough. So Gigabyte's latest laptops under the gamer-focused Aorus and creator-centric Aero brand are available now. All the models are designed to accommodate the latest 13th gen CPUs and RTX 40 series GPUs from Intel and NVIDIA with slender, light, and sleek designs. The new Aorus 17X and 15X bring their A-game with stunning gaming performance. The flagship Aorus 17X boasts an Intel 24-core i9-HX CPU and an NVIDIA RTX 4090 with full access to the 175 watt TGP. Thanks to the Windforce Infinity cooling system, these portable powerhouses can keep cool under pressure, like you when you're playing Dota at 144 hertz. And a low rank. <laughs> and hey, for man. content creators, <laughs> the new Aero 14 and 16 laptop with the dual color calibrated from Pantone and X-Rite 2.0 factory OLED panel lets your work shine the way it's meant to be with a Delta E of less than one for perfect color accuracy. Discover more at oris.com slash laptops slash landing. All right, we're back. Uh, now we're going to talk about MWC, which if you don't know, is the Mobile World Congress in Barcelona that happens every single year. And often there are just a lot of strange announcements at MWC, sometimes concept phones, sometimes concept laptops, sometimes real stuff. Um, and then yeah, sometimes. <laughs> yeah. And then wrong. often uh, announcements of stuff that's coming later in the year. So it's kind of like a CES part two, but specifically more around phones yeah. and that kind of stuff. Um, so there's a bunch of announcements here. The first one we got to talk about that I think uh, I have a lot of comments on is this concept Motorola riser. It's called the Moto riser, which is their, is their rollable phone. And I just want to say it's just this Motorola was right there. They could oh. have, they could have, they could have done Wait. it. <clears throat> they could. I was told that in Portuguese Rola means something not that, so they that I can't say on the podcast. Cool. Darn. All right. but, oh, wait, I think riser is not a bad name. Riser is actually a throwback to an old flip phone Motorola phone Was it called really? the Riser. I didn't know that. Oh. Yeah. But I just mean, like it's spelled like Razer, R I Z R. R I Z R. Oh, or R I S I R. I I see. I mean, yeah. Motorola is huge in Brazil, so oh, they probably need to be sensitive to that. But, yeah. But they could have called it the Moto Roller, too, and that would have been more Motorola fun. Motorola Roller. Well, because it's the Moto. It's not even the Motorola this now. The brand is just Moto now. Oh, that would have been so good. Exactly. Oh. Damn. Okay. That's S tier. I call this still an A-tiered name. Yeah. It's way better than a Sony phone. That might be the best thing about it. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's That's where it's cool, though. So what is it? Did so you look it's at a, it? It's a rolling phone yeah, that it's extends phone. its vertical height. Yes. By so, the way, this is all in the background of us. We did a video on concept phones, which <laughs> my basic conclusion was like, they're um, they're fine. Yeah. But they're what they are is a, a, a marketing spin on failed R&D. Or maybe just not ready yet R&D. So you do all this work, you do prototyping, you test things, and then they get to the stage where you decide if it's going to go on the phone or not. And some things are a no. They don't make it to the phone. But we did spend all that money and do all that R&D, and maybe we just like repackage it and make one phone and like show it off as a concept phone, and then maybe in the future it'll happen. And then suddenly there are companies that have spun this into like, yes, every year we do a concept yeah. phone with a new cool idea, and you yeah. talk about us. So that got me kind of like on this little mini rant. This, I don't think, is going to ever be a real uh, one. I probably doubt it. Yeah. Um, it seems interesting. I mean, it's like this weird aspect ratio, and the screen sort of folds into the, the phone itself. And then when you either press a button or change the direction of the phone, like you're watching a video, it rises like from the back. So the, the screen sort of folds around the phone, mm -hmm. and then a motor pulls it around the front. Yeah. And so much around the phone that yeah, I know motor. It's the, good. Motorola, just saying. Wow. So you can continue. Sorry, <laughs> sorry. I didn't want to. I didn't want to interrupt the joke. It's a, I'm sorry. Um, okay, yeah. But it's it's not that it goes inside the phone either. It literally goes underneath right, and around right. the back, and mm -hmm. then there's a screen on the back as well. Yeah. It's, I, yeah. It's yeah. So you go from a slightly bad. short phone to a normal size phone. Yeah. Well, no, a like a taller phone. Dude, this is completely pointless. <laughs> I agree. I, 
I, I disagree. I, yeah, same. Thank you. But I think this is a poor implementation of it. What would you want this to do? Okay, here's my I issues. Just, I would want it to have a customizable sound effect for when it rolls. That oh, is there's the no only, doubt. If, if I can have it do like the Jetsons car sound, like if this thing, as it unrolls, goes... <laughs> <laughs> knowing motor <laughs> think about that <laughs> knowing yeah. motorola there's no doubt there is a crazy sound that happens yeah, yeah. like the old razor had a crazy sound a pa- sound effects pack of things that happened when yeah. you opened and closed it uh-huh i don't know but yeah what do you what is this I, I like that like i think this short form factor is kind of cool fits in your pocket but this is the so we've seen old rollable concepts that were more like this samsung fold where it goes from a regular size phone and rolls out wide like a square ratio this is the rollable version of like the flip where it's a small compact phone and goes to a normal size phone. Here's the issue. Many. <laughs> yeah. When it goes up, the extra like three inches on the top is just this like super thin, fragile looking screen yeah. that looks like it's going to break immediately. Oh, yeah. And now the thing, the f- when it's small, you have the f- screen on the back. So now you have this uneven back. It's It's like when every single time we say two in one laptops, I don't want a tablet that has keys on the back of it. I want the back to feel normal. Right, yeah. So those are two giant flaws I see with this. There is also a thing where it automatically rolls out if it gets put in landscape mode, which seems bad because uh, if it's like in your pocket and oh happens no. to get put just, just, just starts rolling out. Uh, yeah. And then also having movable parts in devices is That's just main, kind of a bad idea. Yeah. That's the main yeah. thing. We we had those like pop-up cameras briefly, which yeah. I loved, but like and they let's were strong, be honest, they were kind of gonna be on the way out they were a stopgap they lasted one generation exactly <laughs> yeah i feel like with all these concept phones we should put them in the bucket of either uh never gonna happen concept or not ready yet maybe in the future concept yeah this one i think is never gonna happen concept yeah. i still like they did it I, I think it's fun i think i mean rolling screens if if you could can, happen sometime i, I think there's potential <laughs> over a folding screen because, like, if you could go from a a square, small... No, it does eliminate the crease. Uh, kind Technically true. If the crease is the issue, then yes. But you you ditch the crease for a extremely fragile, like... I, well, okay, I'm not saying, like, <laughs> this form factor is how to do it. I'm saying I think there is potential for a maybe. rolling... And maybe not even phone. I do rem- remember the rolling LG TV... Like yes. I do yeah. think that has a niche area where <laughs> that was if you niche. have enough money, yeah, there are lots of people who like to hide their TV screens and there's where they have it like mounted cabinets. in the wall or behind a picture or cabinets yeah. and stuff like that. So that is like a, a nice credenza where you can have nothing there and then a giant TV all of a sudden. Fair. All right. All right. Well, very there's... low tier yeah. of like yeah. might could be happen, but this is this ain't it, bro. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Here's the next one. All right. It's the OnePlus concept phone. We yep. saw this coming. This is the one we got to play with here. This is a concept of a active cryoflux liquid cooling <laughs> trademark thing. Yeah, they call it cryoflux. <laughs> so that's how you know how this is going to go. That's uh, how you know it doesn't do anything. Yeah. So so the full fo- the concept phone itself has these like see-through channels through the back of the phone which have this visible clear liquid with bubbles flowing through it which looks crazy like you've seen a a water-cooled pc where you can like look at the water cooling it's like the same thing you can see the liquid moving um it's got these tiny tiny pumps it has uh led lights in it so you can turn the lights on and it will illuminate all of the liquid moving and it just looks like this cool crazy thing there's also a circle around the camera bump for some reason (laughs) you're cooling your cameras too yeah um but this concept phone doesn't actually cool the phone better than normal. It's just a normal phone with lights and, and actually pumps. makes it hotter. It, yeah, it actually doesn't work <laughs> very well. But their idea was, oh, yeah, we've tested a version of this where we do have it optimized well. And we suspect it can cool your phone while gaming 2 to 2.1 degrees Celsius, which could give you 3 to 4 extra frames per second. Wow. And can charge one minute faster. I think it was like once it was up like a to, few seconds wasn't it was it? up to one minute faster okay for, yeah so great so yeah despite how <laughs> terrible all of that sounded yeah wait you're telling me that that really is water inside there i think this yeah. concept phone has distilled water and blue lights and the theoretical finished version of cryoflux is a special liquid that would optimize this and okay. be cool. And would have a way to dissipate the heat, which it currently does not uh, have. Oh, like an actual heat sink that yeah. it would run over with the water. Yeah. I, the, 
thing about this is all those bubbles like not ideal no it's cool to show that it's actually what well, i thought it was yeah. fake i just thought there were no lights. there there are there's a real pump system where it? it like changes the charge of a thing and because it slightly moves up and down it it sucks water up and then pushes it through another channel okay. yeah it's cool to watch um but well it's cool yeah. to watch because of the bubbles but yeah. the more bubbles there are the less it's cooling yeah. because it's more air than actual liquid like that a, logic yeah. applies to this entire phone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah they did things that look cool to make it look cool that make it worse at cooling yeah, yeah. like if you're looking at a water-cooled pc and you just see that many bubbles going through yeah. you're like Shh, yeah. I need to fix something. Yeah. Or... yeah, exactly. So that that's that was the idea. That they they made a phone that looks really cool, and they presented it, and they were like, "But what if?" Yeah. Um, I'm putting this also in never gonna happen territory because, look, obviously we have these really complicated, uh, really intense cooling systems for our, our our phones because it's very important to keep them cool. They have batteries; they charge over and over, and that's one of the most important things you can do is reducing heat. But this specific method didn't seem like it was going to give that much of an advantage. And if I dug into the phone settings, it had like three thousand milliamp hours of battery missing from it just to make this concept work. Of course, the finished version might be more optimized, but I just don't see it actually. Maybe OnePlus will prove me wrong, but I don't see this ending up in a future OnePlus phone either. Yeah. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. I mean, prove me wrong. They do sometimes end up putting stuff in future devices. Remember their last concept phones? That's though? what I was going to yeah, say. Yeah, they didn't put any of Word stuff in the future. Their last three was, concept yeah. phones also didn't, didn't come to the real yeah. device. It was a color changing back with piezoelectric, yeah. piezoelectric, however you say it. And then it was uh, ND, ND filter, filter over the camera, which was the sick. same super thing. I, which I that. wanted that to be yeah, a real thing. Yeah. That's the one thing that I think, please, yeah. OnePlus, prove me wrong. Yeah. But they haven't done Which is also piezoelectric, right? Yep. Yeah. 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 So, you know, that probably won't come to to market. I was I was a little bit annoyed because a lot of the headlines were like OnePlus made a water-cooled phone and it does but it doesn't actually work. Like Yeah. They they were they were like, "Yeah, this could work if we had the additional components to actually cool it." And I'm like, "Okay, but how much extra space is that going to take up? Is the battery going to be even more reduced?" I made an electric car that goes 1000 miles on a charge. <laughs> Just not this one. Just, it does. Just but look at it. Yeah. Doesn't Where it look I, like it would go a thousand? Where's miles? your pre-order? Well, yeah, I'll exactly. pre-order. Right your pre-order. Right. I'll take yeah. your hundred bucks right now. It'd be interesting to see this Cryoflux tech uh, put into a wireless charger instead of a That's phone. Exactly where you have what like, I was thinking. We have like a little more space for a little more liquid, and it would just cool during the charging process. It would work perfectly mm-hmm. with OnePlus Two because they're so focused on like we're like with is it still called warp charging? It's dash it's dash charging no, now. It's something no. else now. It's, it was dash. Now it's vooch vook vook <laughs> super, <laughs> super okay vook. whatever. Yeah, it's from it's an Oppo. Brand they like they, they like to over. they super like vook. to enhance the charging function, right? Yeah. So like yeah. then they why don't they do this as their new like cool super vook wireless charging where and it could even have the cool lights and the water flowing through the back and all the bubbles if you want. Because I mean yes, but then it would only reduce charging temperature which is just one of the oh, factors yeah. and you won't get those you won't three, get three frames. to four frames a yeah. while gaming <laughs> i guess but okay the irony is that almost all mobile games are capped at 30 to 60 fps and almost true. every single phone already hits that whoops yeah anything that's so, going with like a high refresh rate is made to get to that yeah, like already and it's probably hitting that refresh rate so like yeah. i don't think anybody's hitting that span of Oh, I've got more frames than my phone yeah. can like really handle. I think I that I, well, something I'd like to see more of um, is Asus do, does that thing where while you have your phone plugged in while you're gaming, it doesn't actually push energy to the battery. It just powers all the components straight through the cable. Mm, pass through. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think this makes sense as a gaming phone, but as a gaming accessory for gamers to have one more RGB thing on their desk. And now when they pick up their phone in between matches, it'll be less hot. Yep. And this that, is uh, that on its own by two I mentioned the, degrees Celsius. I mentioned the ROG phone and the Legion phone dual yeah. in our video. Yeah. Sick. Phones that are inherently more niche, but that can pull off these more optimized features for your last three to four FPS on Genshin Impact or the most intense games where you do want that. Yeah. So it's out there. Yeah. Uh, okay, what else do we get? Next, Speaking of charging. Yeah. Yes. Next uh, we have hot a new Redmi phone. Well, not new because it probably won't come to market. It might. It actually probably will come to market. Uh, a phone that charges with 300 watts and can charge from zero to 100 in literally under five minutes. A lot. Um, I feel like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh I feel like every single month, 
we get a new fastest charging smartphone. I feel um, like there, yeah, I just saw like a 240 watt one and I was like, that one's actually coming to market too. Yeah. That one's coming to market. And so, yeah, it's like 240 watts is a MacBook Pro 16 inch M1 Max is 140 watts. Zero to 105 minutes? Yeah. Okay, so five minutes Pro. is- is Less than five minutes. It's like, it's like 450 or something. It's 300 seconds. Yeah, we can just say five And minutes. so- Divided by, a, so it's 1% per second every three seconds. I think they said 1% a second. Probably maybe at peak? Maybe at the peak. Oh. 1% yeah. per second is <laughs> do, hilariously do, fast. Do, do. Jesus. Yes. Let me start this timer and you just plug your phone in and watch <laughs> yeah. the bad. <laughs> oh yeah. my God. Yeah, dude. Your that's, stopwatch. So yeah, it's like, you need a charge real quick here? Just, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I would really, yeah, seriously. I would, I would really like this in something that has a bigger battery capacity. Um, because as we've seen with smartphones, like you have this super high wattage charging, but it only hits that wattage for like a few seconds and then it drops. Like the charging curve is very like gets to the top and then just dunks. Right. You know, I mean, this is that curve will be true for all of these types of batteries. But for larger capacity batteries, it's more interesting. Like we yeah. mentioned tablets when we were talking about this. Uh, or or laptops. computers, laptops. Yeah. How wild would a 10-minute charge on a laptop be? Yeah. Like, that'd be sick. Yeah, the and MacBook Smartwatch. Pros already charge really fast. Yeah. But if you could charge that at like double the speed. Imagine just so tapping much. your Apple Watch Ultra on the charger. And it's just, just 100. <laughs> charge 100% super capacitors. We're yeah, in there. Those, those have like 410 million power batteries. So that would be <laughs> insanely fast. 100% one per in one second. One second. Yeah, that would be sick. pretty nice. Um, yeah. yeah. So maybe that will come to market in like a year considering the 240 watt phone just came to market. Yeah. And by the time this comes, there'll be a 350 watt yeah, concept. So. Yeah. I was going to say, did they present this as a concept or as a, as, as a, a feature of a phone? Concept. That's coming? Okay. So I'm, yeah. I'm going to, I'm going to file this under it's coming, just not ready yet. Yeah. Cause that, I'm ready for the kilowatt phone. Oh my God. I'm ready for the kilowatt. It phone. sounds crazy now, but it's, it's going to, it's going to happen it could and happen. it's going to be like 3% in one second. Yeah. <laughs> <So> <laughs> yeah. It's ridiculous. Do, do, do. Okay. okay. That's, that's sick. Yep. Um, next we've got a rolling laptop, which I would definitely use. Uh, it Why? Is very what is, cool. Explain. So this is not dissimilar to the Moto Riser. Um, it, it's Lenovo also. Oh, it's it's Lenovo. also Lenovo. Yeah. yeah. It's a ThinkBook concept. Um, but it's like a regular aspect ratio computer mm -hmm. that has sort of like a, like a shroud over the back of itself. But then when you want to extend it, it just rises upwards and it becomes a very strange <laughs> oh aspect god. ratio. It gets taller. Yeah, it gets taller. It gets really it's the tall. Dual, know, it's the it dual really up tall. laptop. Oh my god. It gets like one and a half, almost two X taller than the normal. It's. I yeah. said it's like Gerald from Hey Arnold. <laughs> the hair yeah, yeah. Well, it takes a hat off i think it's super oh sick i would run two arc browsers on top of each other if well, this is the case well arc browser you can do vertical split tabs hey. so you just do one giant tall tab oh. okay so what would you actually do with that extra vertical resolution just you're have just, another browser for more just, tabs for me okay yeah yeah That's, more tabs i mean because i'm thinking about someone who would pay extra money for this rollable crazy thing and then trying to think of the reason that they got sold on this idea there are like those con like uh, there's those asus computers that have a second display on the bottom and theoretically you can do anything quote unquote second display by just splitting the display mm -hmm. right so if you wanted to have like discord or twitch chat in the bottom and then have your game in the top part you could do that yeah you know I'd just like more real estate to be honest it's it's fair laptops are vertically constrained i mean they're, they're all widescreen laptops and so this is why Arc Browser was so interesting to me is because it put the tabs on the side like, oh, duh. Yeah, that's the spot we have more extra room. Mm -hmm. That's, yeah. Okay. Do you think this is going to actually no. ever? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I feel like this almost is kind of on my point of rollable screens where like at least this goes into a protected aspect. Like you're not right. going to run around and snap the top of the screen off. It, Wait. it provides a little more. Because it looks like it rolls back down under, I'm assuming, the base of the laptop. That's a guess. Is that what happens? Uh, That's a guess. Not sure. Where does it roll? I guess it must roll. <laughs> where does I mean, it where, roll? where else could it roll? Yeah. Under what, the keyboard. When it's unrolled, the aspect ratio is 8 by 9, <laughs> which is like having two 16 by 9 displays on Wait, top of Is that of not other. what the dual up is? Or is it 9 by 8? The dual up is uh, 16 by 18. So it is 
eight by nine. Yes. Okay, it, but yeah, yeah it is for listeners, yeah, yeah. the dual up is a very strange Sorry, yeah. uh, display. For listeners, the dual up is the greatest monitor invented by man. Just want to say, my monitor. my friend just got one, and like I told him, you had it and you liked it, and he loves it. <laughs> There's so many has, people buying that. It has <laughs> terrible <laughs> pixel print. Nice, <laughs> and I love it to death. All right, Lenovo, we yeah. see you. So I like this. Lenovo always does really, really weird stuff. It's so funny watching it roll up. Like you have to yeah. go watch a video of it rolling. It's fantastic. Yeah. They I can do... just imagine being in Starbucks, and, like staring at somebody, and your screen just slowly just rolls rising. up. <laughs> you catch somebody's eyes over the top of your laptop, and you just hit the button, and it just rolls up over your eyes, and all you hear is, <laughs> oh, <no>. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Uh, we also got a bunch of new foldable phone news, which is cool. Um, OnePlus officially announced that they're bringing a foldable phone to market by the end of the year, which is cool. Uh, there's going to be a new Moto Razr 4 that's coming out this year that the concepts look kind of insane for. Like the entire front of the saw that. thing is a display that's, and it goes and around the cameras. Like literally the whole front. Like yeah. the cameras are a cutout on the In front the display yeah. on the flip. That's I mean, if they can pull that off, that's crazy. Yeah. We were yeah. talking about this. I don't know if I... It's not going to look great. David and I were saying it would be really cool if there was some sort of like low power always on display. Yeah. Or else it is just fingerprint black it's, on the front of it's it. It's fingerprint. All it's durability. It's yeah. that's a lot because now you before you were protecting the inside screen, but the outside was at least the outside. And the, the screens on the outside get bigger and bigger, and that's more and more functional, but that's also more and more now you just have a glass sandwich. I guess ultimately bread. that's what a regular phone is, right? The screen true. just outside. That's a fact. It's, I mean, like, it probably doesn't have as much protection on the edges, and you don't have a, if you're a case user, like most people are, it's probably not protecting that screen, but. Oh, yeah. It's kind of weird. Yeah, a case for that phone's going to be weird. <laughs> real it's just a real weird. Yeah. It's just a bumper, I guess. Yeah, basically. How long do we have a folding that. phone that's folding screen on the inside and the outside? So it's just full screen <laughs> both sides. Remember the remember like the couple years we had where every phone's like mm. presentation was like eighty one percent screen to body ratio. Yeah, two hundred percent screen to body <laughs> ratio. <laughs> that was that concept. That was that Xiaomi. Uh, yeah, the, the concept yeah. phone. That where was the whole Mimix thing. Fold. Yeah, no Mimix no, Alpha. Oh, Mimix Alpha. Alpha. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And I did make a video on that. Concept phone, fully knowing that that's not going to happen and it's a terrible idea, but it was just something to look at. You can still at. buy it. You can't. You can't buy the Alpha. You can buy the Alpha. Really? Yeah. Not. Di- I don't think directly through Xiaomi, but you can buy like you can buy them. They're really expensive. Oh, they were very protective of it, and they took it back as soon as I was done. Yeah. They were can... like, "Please, no more touching." <laughs> this is a very <laughs> yeah. delicate prototype we made. It is a weird phone. Wow. Um. Yeah. Next, we've got this phone from Techno, which is a brand that has been making some weird phones recently. Um, they made some color changing phone last year that got everybody's attention. But this one is basically just a Galaxy Z Fold competitor. But the thing about it is that it's like $1,000 and there's an early bird price that makes it under $1,000. Hmm. So for the, I guess this would be the hot dog style foldable. Am I Fold correct? versus flip. Uh, is yeah, that like an official flip. thing? Like, yeah, yeah. When I hear fold, this is what I think. Yeah, it's uh, like the first fold phone that's going to come in at nine seventy nine. Hot dog fold. Hot dog. Yeah, fold. Uh, never Wait, mind. We is that do... not hamburger fold? Well, but if you think of the flip, yeah, then that's the way flip more is hamburger. Hamburger. I yeah, feel like because it's like buns on top of each other versus sure. Buns I, spreading I was out. picturing the flip on yeah. its side becoming you know the longest, most hot dog. That's a hot dog. Dog. I feel like we're thinking of like bun. Like how you would fold it. Mm. Yeah, the bun folds over it, you know. Yeah. Like if, you have a, if you have a piece of paper, no, hot no, dog fold. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thing. No, you're right, you're right, you're right. I see it now. Yeah. You could fit a hot dog in exactly. a Samsung Z Got Fold. Z yeah, fold yeah. But yeah. not yeah. in the Z Flip. No, it would, it would a hot out. dog would be out of place in a Z Flip. Yeah, right? yeah. <laughs> but you could put a hamburger <laughs> patty inside of a Z flip. flip. If it was dense enough. Sliders. Are you White Castle? Yeah. This is what um, people hey guys, are can talking we talk about, about phones again? <laughs> when they say we go off the rails, this is what they're referring to. This is exactly what they're talking about. Off the bun. Off the, okay. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. There's uh, one more link in here. Yeah, and then the other thing was that we're probably going to get a Pixel Fold at some point this uh, year. So getting a ton of foldable phones this year, which I think is really sick, and we might even have enough. We were talking about this earlier. We might say, have enough to do a best foldable phone category. Should in we do that? Awards. We've been debating it for a long time. Will there be enough folding phones that come out during the year? And do we think folding phones are going to stick around long enough that we should have a best folding phone trophy specifically 
And then will there be another year of best folding phones after? So I think there will be at least two. Two yeah, years, years of, of enough. Oh, yeah. I was like, there's going to be more than two full. No, there's going to be like yeah. there's going to be like seven or eight this year. How long until someone oh. other than Samsung wins that trophy, though? Pixel Fold. Well, honestly, the <laughs> Oppo Find N2, N2 Flip Ugh. might be considered a better built flip than Samsung. Just the Find N2 also is yeah. the Find so N2 nice. for some <laughs> people is is that good? It's that it's that it's like the passport type instead yeah. of the bigger uh, Galaxy Fold. Is people. that also coming to the US this year? No, that one's I, not. I was largely disappointed Damn. because I was told by a source that the regular Find N2 was coming global at MWC. And then apparently they scrapped making it global and they're going to see how they find N2 Flip does globally because that's going global. Okay. And depending on how that does, the regular find N2 might go global. But <laughs> no I'm like, pressure. guys, the better one is just the find N2. Yeah. I don't really care about the flip. Interesting. Yeah. Well, so I think I, there's going to be enough to 10? consider. Doing. Do you think there's 10? Think 10 there different 10. folding phones? I mean, we have Samsung Xiaomi. Fold, Samsung Flip. Uh-huh. Xiaomi Fold, Xiaomi Flip. Oppo Find N2, Oppo Find N2 Flip. Yep. Yep, that's six. Uh, then OnePlus. If OnePlus comes out. Pixel. Pixel. Pixel, this Techno one. Techno. There has to be one other one we're nope. missing. I just need another one. Oh, and Honor. there's also Honor. Honor, Honor and there's really also, stairs. yeah. There's a Huawei Flip, or Fold. Toss the Flex. We're button. definitely over Razor V4. There's not going to be The Razor V4, yeah. Razor V4. Yeah. The yeah. OnePlus one probably doesn't come out this year, I'm guessing, right? No, it is coming out this year. Oh, it's coming out this year. That, we're over that 10. News. I think there's. I think we've got a new category. All right. I think it's going to The happen. category can, in your, like, if you're worried about it lasting for so long, it can turn into, like, something else later. Or yeah. we can just hold a funeral for folding phones at some <laughs> For the category. We have yeah. a whole casket. We have the design category and that ended up being like, wow, folding flip phones might become a thing. It might start winning the design category, but yeah, putting it in its own category is starting to make I more think sense. so, yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I like it. So yeah, I mean, I think by the end of the year, we're going to have definitely enough folding phones and I think considering there's this much, uh, this many phones coming out right now, yeah. next year, I'm sure there'll be enough too. And there's genuine interest, at least on my part, of like how the different ones will do it. What is a OnePlus folding phone going to do different from an Oppo folding phone? What is a Pixel folding phone going to look like? Mm -hmm. And is that going to put pressure on some others? Maybe Samsung start to look different? Yeah. Does the out outer screen get bigger? All this stuff. Yeah. A yet another we'll keep an eye on it moment, yeah. I think, yeah. for all these. Cool. And all of these are supposed to launch by the end of the year, which is really awesome. I'm very excited. Kind of sick. Year. Yeah. All right. All right, well, that, that loops us right into trivia then for our last segment. Let's do it. All right, so for today's second trivia question, I wanted to do another audio round. So I have three sound effects. This time we're going um, sounds and jingles from famous tech company advertising. Um, so I'll play all three sounds right here. You can let them sit in your head, and then at the end we can uh, start to make our guesses. Name like the company or the product. The company. I think all three. Yeah, all three of them are companies. Okay. Yeah. I know the Coca Cola one, but, <laughs> but that's not a tech company. So oh, it's a tech company jingle. Yeah, I and, uh, for a second. Or and sound I'll just tell you now. <laughs> think tech company more broadly. You know what I mean? Like product company. Yeah, yeah. Metaphorically yeah. a tech company. You know, like Pillsbury <laughs> isn't going to be in here. Oh, okay. You know what isn't, I mean? Right. Okay. All right. Hey, number one. Pillsbury's a tech company. Oh, yeah. Easy. Okay. I got that. Right? So easy, Andrew. Yeah. I actually think I have the. Yeah. Uh, number two. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And number three. No. That's a tough one. <laughs> that one? That's a tough one. You want an increasing order of difficulty there. If you, uh, if you think really hard about this one, you will get it. It's, it's when, I, when I tell you, you're going to be like, oh my gosh. Are points one per correct guess or one for all three? Uh, one per correct Sweet. guess. Wow, opportunity right. arises. A lot of points on the board this week. Yeah. We'll be right back. All right, welcome back. Let's talk about uh, a short that we did on a new feature. It was an iPhone feature. Uh, I just thought the reactions to it were fascinating, and I feel like I ended up in hot take territory, so I'll just go over what happened and then my take. I already 
can imagine. I think I had a similar response to when the boxes got smaller and I got kind of dumped on also. Okay. And I okay. understand. We'll boxes. see if we're on the same page. So so this new iPhone feature, iOS 16.3.1 added a toggle in the iPhone's battery health settings. And let me actually, oh, I'll, well, I'll pull up the video so we can all get it exactly right. But it's called clean energy charging. And what it does, and this is entirely us trusting Apple at this point, because I don't know how they do this, but it knows when you plug in, whether or not you are drawing from clean energy sources or not. And if it detects that you're in part of like some routine charging, like let's say you plug in at 11 p.m., it will wait until you are charging from cleaner energy sources to start your charge or speed up your charge. Um, when this does happen, you will get a notification and you can override it anytime you want. But the idea is this is a opt out feature, meaning it is mm. on by default flipped on for every iPhone in the US that just updated their software. So me by myself leaving this feature on is not going to meaningfully impact my carbon footprint. I charge, I drive an electric car, like me charging my phone at a slightly different time is not going to matter. But Apple flipping the switch for every iPhone in the US collectively gives them something to brag about because they just took the equivalent of, you know, a million cars off the road or something crazy. I think they're going to say probably at their next iPhone keynote what it did. But they get to say that we made this free change to the iPhone that made nobody's experience worse, theoretically, and saved a ton of the environment. And it's, like, it's just like a a rare win for the environment coming from a mega company like Apple. So my take was, this is a good thing. <laughs> but when I made this <laughs> short, all the comments were, thanks for pointing this out. I turned it off immediately. <laughs> oh. <laughs> it's like, obviously people don't want their charging to slow down or, or be interrupted when it's inconvenient to them. But I mean, the idea is you don't even notice the features on, which I think is what Apple was planning on. I'm curious if you guys feel the same way. Yeah, so I mean, there is a there's a thing that happens where if your phone is on the charger and it's not pulling from clean energy sources, it just won't charge and it'll have a little thing that comes up that says, by the way, this is a dirty energy source. Uh, you can bypass this setting and just hit charge now. Mm -hmm. um, I want to see, like tweet at us if you ever get that notification. Get this notification. Yeah. I'm really curious. I'm wondering what points of the night or the day your house or wherever you are is going to be pulling from dirty energy sources. And I, I would like to know this. I get a letter from like Con Edison like every month being like, you can pay a little bit more yeah. to make sure that you pull from clean energy sources more often. It costs a little bit more money, but your carbon footprint. Your conscience. Your conscience. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I think like you said, one iPhone, especially in a phone that has, you know, like a 4,000 million hour battery is not going to do much. Yeah. But if you turn it on for like every single iPhone in the United States collectively, yeah. it will do something. Theoretically. And yeah. the interesting, the most interesting thing about this to me is that it was, it's opt out. Yeah, it's rare. It's very rare that companies will turn something on by default and you have to turn it off because usually that makes people really upset, especially think, when it affects their charging. Yeah. Apple knows nobody would have turned this on. Yeah. Yeah. Nobody totally. Would have turned no this one. On. Yeah. So for them to go through all the R&D, which I suspect is a lot location. for them to like location based decide when your your energy is going to be cleanly sourced. I don't even know how they That's do that. That's one thing I want to know is like that feels very, it's like, there's it a lot feels... of companies who if they said that, I'd be like, really? It might be EPA data. I would bet you that the EPA requires local energy providers to say what times they're providing clean energy and dirty energy. So GPA, mm -hmm. GPS based and then like time of day is yeah, probably like, yeah, what's time of day. But it yeah. also depends on your on your provider too. Yeah. Like it's different for different providers. Also That's my house thing. is on solar. Yeah, if you're on so solar, do what they does know that mean? if you're on solar? Yeah, you're always I have no clean. idea. Always so, but clean. the idea is like uh, by them opting everyone into it, at least in the US for now, um, it is some level of a meaningful positive change. So I was, I was like, yeah, this is a good thing for them to add, which was turns out to be a hot take. People hate this. They hate this. So you single-handedly okay. <laughs> made a bunch of people use dirtier energy. I, I mean, I put this video on uh, YouTube Shorts. It's on TikTok. It has probably like 5 million views between those two. 5 million Lots iPhones of people turned it off. Turned off. <laughs> a lot yeah. of people turned it off. And I get it. Yeah, people sure. don't want that possibility of like any... It also kind of feels like guilting because the way they phrased it, it's like yeah. the iPhone will try to reduce your carbon footprint. Yeah. Which if they phrased know, it just a little yeah. different, like Apple would try to reduce 
iPhone's global yeah. carbon mm-hmm. footprint or something like that, maybe it would have felt a little different, but it's like, I don't need you trying to help my carbon footprint. I mean, that's that's what like the whole US basically is in terms of like recycling and everything, right? It's like, yeah. let's make the user think it's their right. fault when it's mega no, corporations the, the, that are totally the The problem. term carbon footprint was created by what, <laughs> Shell? As like a way to so. gaslight people into thinking <laughs> that global warming is their fault right. when like 85% of global warming comes from yeah. like 10 corporations or something. Yeah. I, I will say- and and some like, random numbers, it's around there. It's pretty, it's really bad, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I'll say, and this kind of can also loop back into when I made the, a similar comment to the reducing the size of boxes, I ultimately thought it was a good thing. I do think this is a good thing, and I do think good things can happen even if Apple's end goal isn't to be good. There is incentive for them to do this, mm-hmm. which like the boxes, it was saving Apple a ton of money, right? Right. We still got a beneficial environmental impact from them saving a ton of money. Yeah. So, there's definitely some incentive somewhere here. I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's so they can say they're net zero emissions or it can help their numbers on yeah. carbon emissions and stuff like that. There's definitely tax breaks or whatever. Mm-hmm. Or just like towards something. Exactly. So it is in their interest to do this, not in the world's interest, but the world still benefits, benefits from right. this. Yeah. Which I'm okay. It's similar to like, People who donate a bunch of money on right. YouTube. It's, it's effective like altruism. Something, yeah, kind of stuff. something good still happens. There may be an ulterior motive of it, but I don't care because something good happened and yeah. that may have not happened in that Yeah, sense. I think most of the comments of people objecting to it were like, Apple, you could do so much more. You could source batteries yeah. better. You could do all these other things. But it also kind of feels like when like a billionaire donates to charity in a very public way, you're like, oh, I see what you're doing here. Mm-hmm. But you did also just do a really good thing and enable a lot of things to be better about the yeah. world. So I guess I can't be mad. So yeah. it's a good thing. I'm right. happy it happened. I don't need to relentlessly applaud them for it, yeah. I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll see. I, I, My bet and maybe, we, I don't know, do we have like a tally of like running bets of things? I do, I've, but I haven't been adding it to lately. Okay. But I should. Well, somebody in the comments or on Twitter, keep an eye on this. I, I'm pretty sure they're going to in the next year say in an iPhone related keynote, what this I, I it's probably it dubbed up tons of co2 removed from the environment or cars taken off the road yeah equivalent something yeah. like that i bet at wwdc maybe i mm-hmm. will that might say be a little too, too quick just looking it up just to like clarify how they're doing this mm-hmm. um all the sources i've been finding say that your iphone gets a forecast of the carbon emissions in your local energy grid and uses it to charge your phone during times of cleaner energy production meaning like off peak times yeah. Like so your energy grid is probably power. not dependent on your provider. They're all p- pulling from the same grid, but yeah. using different providers. Mm. So the clean energy versus dirty energy is independent of your provider, maybe? I don't know enough maybe about yes. this. Yeah. yeah. I don't know enough about this Yeah, to I, say definitively. Like when I wireless charge my phone in my car and my car is charging on a Tesla supercharger, what happens then? It, like yeah. I just, I don't know. Anyway. Dirty I think it's it's going to change also a lot city by city because every city has a different relationship with different power suppliers yeah. and distributors. Yeah. And anyone who lives in Philadelphia knows endlessly like how complicated this is. Yeah. Yeah. New York just shut down a nuclear plant, which was like one of their last clean energy sources or something. And I don't know. Yeah. It's controversial. I don't know enough about it to have an opinion. Don't. Don't uh, cancel me. I'm counting. So stop canceling Marquez. <laughs> yeah. Start canceling David. <laughs> no. I'm counting this as a positive <laughs> switch flipped, which is rare in Apple land that we can all agree that Apple did something independently siloed that is great for the environment. So I'm just counting this as like a good thing. I'm just yeah. leaving it at that. One of the few things that is opt out that is actually yeah. probably That's good. actually, to be maybe, fair, most opt out things are like really bad. Yeah, like yeah, it's they rare. have to do opt out because no one in their right mind would ever put it. It's yeah. it's so rare that they add a feature, even like with the iPhone when they added all these lock screen features and all this stuff with the new version of iOS. You have to find it. Yeah, like they don't automatically start adding widgets to your like all this stuff that gets added to the especially right. with Apple. They keep the yeah. iPhone so simple. Yeah, and so like if you want to find <laughs> something and add it, then you can do it. But everything will be in a setting for you to enable later. And the stuff that they do with batteries, which is there's this one thing that they already do, which is if you charge at the same time every day and you have an alarm for the next morning, it will not charge your phone all the way up right away. It'll charge to 80% and then wait until an hour before your alarm clock's gonna go off and then charge the last little bit because it doesn't wanna be at 100% all the time, lots of good reasons for that. That's one of the rare things that it'll just start doing automatically. I just found it fascinating that that was like, I'm very curious like you, who's gonna get this notification? Yeah. And how many people will uh, yeah. actually see it. And and we'll see. <laughs> Another 
One more time. We'll see how this goes. <laughs> we'll see how it pans we out. We need a sound effect for that. <laughs> yeah, it's starting to, we'll probably have a button on the on the uh, roadcaster. We'll see how this goes. But that's that's kind of it. We have a couple other small things. Uh, oh. There's a new Google Keep widget, which will I put this in you. just for you. Well, I'm not going to use Google Keep. I but love Google Keep. I, I use Google Keep every day. Really? Yeah. Is it your to-do list app? Yes, it is. Really? Because mm-hmm. you can't set rem- reminders, can you? Mm, I don't know. It's just like a checklist thing. I don't look it. at David's Google Keep. It gives me anxiety. <laughs> <laughs> you want to see my Google Keep? Mm, maybe I'm not, not going to show it publicly to the audience, but... I'll blur it out. Just take a screenshot. Okay. Well, the new feature is you can add a widget with your to-do list I, with yeah. functional checkboxes to your home screen. That's what so mine if looks you, like. All of those are active notes? Uh, yep. Yeah, you don't even well, color but, code them. And they're all checkboxes. Yeah, but the, it's got a really good search feature. Have you seen my tab management? <laughs> That's fair. <laughs> yeah. This is uh, just... Yeah, Andrew, let's go. <laughs> I actually recently moved a lot of my kept Google my Keep things. My mileage plus number just randomly in here. I, <laughs> yeah. Okay. I did, I did a lot of this. I, re, I moved a lot of that stuff into Notion, and I have like a section for mm-hmm. things that I keep long term. I have my like mileage plus number or like mm-hmm. backup passwords. But it's or, literally called Google Keep. You should be keeping them in Keep. Well, I have some stuff. The one thing, weirdly, that I've kept there is in golf, I have, like, my stock yardages for all my clubs. So when I'm playing, I pull up the document, and it's got, like, 7-iron, 185, 6-iron, 195, 5-iron, 205. And I can just, like, pull it up, know the yardage, and I, that's, like, the thing that I keep there. I don't do the shopping list thing. Mm. I don't do the to-do list thing. Mm. I, I don't use keep that much. Well, the, the news is the, the widget for keep Yeah, that can now be on your home screen, right? Which is cool. Unless you check stuff off. Unless right. You check stuff I actively. think you couldn't do that before. Yeah. 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 So now you can have like a you can have like a shopping list and you check it off on your home screen instead of having to be in the app. Do you know what's cool that you can do on Google Keep that like I saw recently that I didn't know you could do is Power Keep users, baby. You can take a picture of like your shopping list on like a whiteboard. Yeah. You can yes. Change it into text and add checkboxes onto uh-huh. it. So, like, you can do a grocery list that easy. And now you can add it to your home screen. We should do a short on this. I think it's a. Uh, I think we. I think you listed board that already. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Google Keep power user hidden features. Let's yeah. go. Yeah. Uh, I, 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 I love the power Keep. user features. Yeah, I use it all the time. One last thing: Microsoft brings Phone Link, that lets you now use iMessage from your PC. Is this better or worse than Air? What is the, th- the thing on the Air Mac? Message? Air Message? Yeah. Is this, is this actually so going to work? So the difference is that for Air Message to work, you have to have a Mac server mm-hmm. because it's passing the information through the server into the cloud and then to your phone. Yeah. Whereas this is a Bluetooth uh, handshake that is connecting oh. your phone to your window, your iPhone to your Windows computer via Bluetooth. And then it's just passing the information through your iPhone through your iPhone over Bluetooth to the Windows computer. It shows your iMessages on your computer, but mm-hmm. it is only messages that you've gotten and sent since you connected in that session. Oof. So you won't have a history. As soon as you disconnect, they go away. Yeah, that was away. my question. Because I could understand not having all your previous messages when you first joined, but then every time I close my laptop, oh, that's terrible. Yeah, um, you can't do group messages and you can't send photos. So it's literally like you are well, just texting, but it happens to show up as a blue bubble on the other person's phone. Well, I guess, and it's like, it's happening while you're working. Like if you don't want your phone up, like if you want a little separate chat log on the side, yeah. but yeah. no pictures sounds crazy. Like that's something I would love to just, cause I have drag it yeah. from the desktop. Yeah. I have like way more pictures on there that I've edited or whatever that I want to send to somebody. And Windows has already integrated um, iCloud photo, like I, iCloud photo mm. um, backup through their photos app, I believe. So you can sync iCloud photos through on Windows now, mm-hmm. but it's not within phone link. So that's pretty frustrating. Um, yeah. It's possible they could like bundle them in the future, but air message, which is what I've been using to be able to send iMessages through an Android phone, allows you to do the full resolution photos and videos that you can do on iMessage. Huge. It allows you to do group messages, huge. which is huge. Uh, the only thing you can't do right now on air message is uh, react to messages, but you do get reactions. You just can't react back yet. It's also funny because just regular RCS lets you react to iMessages. Yeah. Now I know. on Android. Well, this is what I was gonna say. Well, yeah, I guess that's through Android. Right, so this is specifically for people who have iPhones but have Windows computers, yeah. which I know that doesn't seem like there's a lot of those people. Oh, no, there are. Um, totally Yeah, are. I guess there are. Yeah. I, I have a couple friends um, that work in like finance that work at my cafe a lot, 
and they have iPhones for their phone, but they are issued like a Lenovo mm -hmm. laptop that yeah. they can only use that for work. Yeah. So, I mean, if you want to be able to text from your computer and you have an iPhone, but you have a Windows laptop, then I guess it's beneficial. It's just like annoying that it wipes it every session and can't do images and can't do group messages and all that stuff. It's a start. It's a start. It's a start. It's well, a start. you know what I'm going to say already? Trivia? We'll keep an eye on that. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see how this goes. Yeah. Uh, I want to give a quick shout out to uh, Hassan Minaj who had me on uh, The Daily Show. He's hosting The Daily Show this week and he came to the studio and we shot something briefly and it was really fun. We'll put a link in the show notes. It's he hates tech. I'm the tech guy. That synergy was hilarious. So check that video out. Uh, but we should wrap it up with those trivia answers. Let's get to it. Trivia, dude. Trivia, oh, dude. My marker's over there because I threw it at the camera last <laughs> oh, week. <okay. laughs> All right. So first question what was the name of Rivian, the company, before it was called Rivian? And they're writing, writing on the boards. Deep looks of concentration. <laughs> Time's running out. Do you have your answers? Man, I don't know this one. I have no idea. <laughs> I actually am very curious what the answer is, but I don't know what it is. Well, there's two. Oh, God. Yeah, there's two. All right. Flip them and read. Hold on. I'm still writing my explanation. <laughs> okay. Oh, my God. Okay. Well, we can still get the points yeah. from that. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we're both wrong. I know that much. Yours is closer than mine. I wrote Crivian. <laughs> <laughs> Crabian. No. <laughs> I wrote R1. No. Yeah. Nope. Is David? it Amazon? No, All right, I'm, okay. I'm just going to say it. So it was going to be the name. But then, <laughs> okay. I just can't remember the name. And they, they were going to call it that. But then another car company released a model of their car, which was the same name as the car that Rivian was, the company that Rivian was going to call their company. Model. I, I don't know that to be true. So I don't have any, no. any like, sounds for that. <laughs> Buzz it. Let's okay. hear it. There it is. I can, exp I can also explain why it's called Rivian. Oh, why is oh. it called Rivian? Yeah, why? Let's because it's a combination. It's a mash of the word river with something regarding IAN. Um, Ian. It was like a thing. Oh, like an like an Amazon river thing. I don't know. No, but it was <laughs> river was. It's something a wordplay on Indian River in Florida. Oh, yeah. where, where RJ grew up. Yeah. RJ being the CEO. So river and Indian. Uh, yeah. Indian river. Indian river. Mm. Rivian. Rivian. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. But no, didn't get the answer. All right. That didn't, so the correct answer. Yeah, what is that? I didn't get the answer. So it was first started as Mainstream oh, Motors. Mainstream. And then it was renamed in 2011 to Avera Automotive. Avera. Yeah. That's and better. And then it became Rivian. Avera. I like Rivian. <laughs> I was better. worried yeah. one of the names were going to be, I would like it more than Rivian. So I'm glad Avera. I like Rivian. Mainstream Motors is terrible. Terrible. Awful. And then Avera is funny. There is a Nevera by Rimat. Yeah. But that, you know. To That's RJ's um, credit, he like started the company in his garage when he was in like high school or something. <laughs> like, True, this guy's crazy. But he, um, yeah, there's a "How I Built This" episode with Guy Raz about Rivian mm, that goes to into detail about all of this stuff. So. We should have him on. We should talk about that novel idea. Yeah, see how it goes. <laughs> we'll keep an eye on that. <laughs> all right, this is the sound one, isn't it? Okay. Do you want us to put you all three on the board at once? No, one, one at a time one for sure. Time. Yeah, let's I do am, one at a time. Okay. I am very confident about one of them. Number one. No one needs to hear it again? No. Nope. Nope. Flip I might around. be wrong, but I also am kind of hoping I'm right. Okay, good. That's what I put. So I wrote both names. Oh, get the... Did you just write no. it? No. Wait. <laughs> no, no, he did start writing before. Yeah, I, but I you can check the tape. I didn't look at it. I feel yours. like it should be specific. I well, it's singular which turned into AT&T, well, but got they kept that by AT &T. Yeah, they kept it. Oh, they it. kept it? Yes. So I they did keep singular starting, starting town. Or I, don't I, I, I don't think yeah. they got it. Yeah, I don't think they got it either. Yeah, no. Is that all really us are wrong? all of us? Yeah. You're all wrong. It's T-Mobile. Oh. That's T-Mobile sound. I really thought that was the singular sound. I need to I need to play the singular. I'm glad I'm glad I wasn't totally out of also, Singular is a pretty good name for a brand. It it's is. It's like it the is. only brand you need. Singular brand. Even though it's spelled differently. Oh, that's, oh, that's the ringtone. That's just ring a ringtone. Yes, yeah, Singular. 
<laughs> that's it's not no no, no it's not a ringtone it's like the it's like what it plays Sound. like at the commercial when it shows the logo are you sure you guys are just thinking of t-mobile that's weird i guess it is t-mobile huh wait was that the same noise <laughs> yeah, yeah that's that was. <laughs> it took i when you wrote down singular i had to think for a second i was like did singular at any point become t-mobile but it didn't it, it became at&t <laughs> yeah. instead Dude. There. yeah wow we just all were that was collectively really? was wrong. That effect called when you think something you like misremember. The bear bears. Bears. Yeah, the, that thing. the Mandela. No, it's crazy yeah, that we all yeah. thought it was singular. Yeah, I, yeah. we just Mandela ourselves. I bet the comment sections can be like, "How did you not know it was T-Mobile?" Yeah, but definitely. I bet other people definitely thought it was yeah, yeah. T-Mobile and or thought it was AT and T and singular. AT and T Mobile. All right, sound number two. That wasn't it. <laughs> Who played that? David. David. <laughs> Will your confidence betray you on round two? No. Yeah, now I'm not so sure. <laughs> yeah. Now I'm not so sure. Verizon. Oh, no. Now I'm really not so sure. Would you like to hear it again? No. Yes, please. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. Now I'm... I'm really <laughs> this is part of it. <laughs> oh, no. Marquez. I'm crossing out what This I one is not. legendarily burned into most people's brains. I think I'm right, but I'm... I was so sure about the last one that I'm not... As Billy Joel would say, you may be right, you may be crazy. <laughs> oh, I'm Mandela. Okay. All right, flip them. I'm ready. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. I'm wrong. Intel. Yeah. Nice. Intel. Gateway. Uh, <laughs> oh. Gateway. It hurts just as much when you're expecting it. Did no. you save yourself? Because you were like, this is burned into people yes. yeah. <laughs> because every time i'd open my damn laptop it would be like da -da -da -da, and i'd be like ah! yeah this one was especially tricky because uh. this sound would get played at the end of commercials that were made by companies that weren't intel it's intel and i yeah. so badly wanted um, to write intel, intel inside. inside yeah like yeah. i wanted to write inside so bad all right for intel. round number three the tricky one dig deep into your memories oh boy i promise if yeah, this memory. is singular <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's gonna be Motorola. <laughs> are you are you ready? Yeah. Oh, I have heard that before. I've so also heard that. That okay, sound wait. played on one particular device. I'm not expecting the device. Um, but versions of that song are used for this brand throughout time. Can you play it one more time? I most certainly can. At least. Just God, can company. you play it again? Can you play it again? <laughs> yes. <laughs> just the company? The company is all I need. Hmm. You want a hint? Yeah. They make hardware. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Helpful. <laughs> Thanks, Alice. Um, they make exclusively hardware. Do, 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 do. That sounds so familiar. That is a core memory from my childhood. I like that guitar strum at the beginning. Boom. It's a good sound. It's memorable. You know what's funny? I put a company and then went, no, I think it's this. And then realized that was made by the company I put down already. Uh, <laughs> wait, give me like another second. Oh, we had the song just so you could... You had to finish before the end of the song. Oh, is that what it was? Yeah. Oh. Three. <laughs> three. All right. Two. Flip them. One. Flipped. Okay. okay three, be three different answers here. Before you guys read, no changing your answers. I'm just curious. Does this jog your memory? Yeah. That's what I was picturing. I was going to ask you. That is what I was thinking. Version wow. of this. That is the extended version of what I just played you. Correct. Oh. I still don't know what that is. Let's read it. It's like the orchestral version. What did you put? I wrote Gateway. <laughs> I wrote Sony. I wrote LG. The answer was Nokia. Uh, That's what that is. And yeah. the sound that I played the you. 808 ringtone. What was the 710 uh, oh. commercial jingle and startup sound? Um. 
beautiful. It's funny how like when you hear Samsung's like orchestral sound or whatever, which is like locked in my brain, they play so many different remixes of yeah. that exact same sound mm. for every Reprise. event, every commercial, everything yeah. they do. That it's incredible. It yeah. must be like oh, a, I'm so glad okay, I'm just I'm, burn that into I'm glad brains. you brought this up. Can I <clears throat> play you five seconds of my favorite Samsung remix of one of their ringtones ever? Okay, yes. this is incredible. This is a live band version of the Galaxy ringtone. That is we, incredible. Oh, it's, I was ready to outro with it. There's like a whole music video, oh my like gosh. the band's in the studio. It's incredible. We'll put that in the show notes. Cool. That's incredible. Yeah, they have a lot of versions. Is there a video? <laughs> there's a video of this? Well, yeah. <laughs> we need a studio viewing of everything? this. Yeah. No one got any points. What? No, we got Intel. We both got Intel. Oh, yeah. So you guys got two points. Uh, okay, never mind then. Yeah, Marquez yeah, didn't I, get any points. I got no points. <laughs> yeah. today. No, you guys are bombed. Which is rough. Um, yeah. That's okay. We'll see how it goes. <laughs> Until it's like your next version week. of Ride the Wave. I know, yeah. We'll, we'll see how we'll see it'll how trivia okay. goes. It'll be okay. Uh, we got plenty more weeks of it coming up for me to catch up. Either way, that's been it. Let me know in the comments the questions that we asked you, of course, because I have plenty of questions. Like, do you ever see that notification? Either way, catch you guys in the next one. Peace. Wayfor was produced by Adam Alina and Ellis Roven. We are partnered with Vox Media Podcast Network, and our intro outro music was created by Vane Sill. Well, this is a different outro music, but Vane Sill could probably do this too.